Well hello there Anxious Cynic back again for part 7 of our Minimator 2 tutorial series and today we're going to cover the render settings and how to finally export your animation. So now that our scene's set up let's go into our render settings and you may recall from the first tutorial that we have these presets and you can use these but if we want to get into the settings we're gonna to have to go to custom so the first thing up is render distance and they have these little you know things here you can use to see what this is all about but basically this is just the the size of your scene that's going to be rendered you can reduce this to make it smaller so that there's less things in the scene to be rendered you can just kind of keep it around the camera instead of things way out there that would be kind of invisible anyway to you know save on performance i assume next up you have samples and this is basically the quality of your animation when you hit the render button here you'll see that down here we have samples and we have just rendered 24 of 24 if i hit play on that it's able to keep up with that pretty well but it's only doing one sample out of the 24 while it's playing when you actually render it's going to go 24 samples for each frame if you want higher quality of course then you can bump this number up i did an animation recently where around 75 seemed to get me good results where there wasn't really much improvement beyond that point so it kind of depends on your scene and your lighting and everything you got set up where you'll have to play with that and it's also about time you know it took me about 15 hours to render around two two and a half minutes of animation at 75 samples so it depends on your computer's hardware your scene all that stuff so you'll just have to play with this and see what's right for you if you don't really care about quality then you can have it way down if you want good quality and you don't you know have to worry about your computer exploding from rendering for 15 to 24 hours or so then uh, bump it on up all right so we got ambient occlusion and basically let's see if we can uh you know what instead of using this camera let's see if we can just render in our big screen here and we don't have any ambient occlusion at the moment and it's basically self shadows that are kind of uh cast from an object something like that so let's turn that on and you'll see there that we get some shadows cast on these parts of our image if i turn it back off see everything's a little bit brighter a little bit flatter turn it back on so things are cast a little bit of shadow on themselves personally i think the default is a bit too much i've always kind of reduced this to about nine on the radius and strength can be kind of left where it is doesn't really matter I, I like it to be a little more subtle let's just say we'll turn about 60 percent i don't know next up we have shadows and by default that's on so you'll see there shadows probably want those on uh, but we have your light buffers and basically this is the quality of the shadows that you're gonna get so for sunlight by default it's on big or at least when we came from our performance preset we can make this very big or gigantic if you want that extra oomph of quality uh, and the same goes for your spotlight and your point light so basically if you have spotlights in your scene or you have point lights in your scene by default here they may not be the highest quality buffer sizes so if you have those and you want better performance out of your lights and the quality that they're going to be casting and shadowing and whatnot then you may want to uh, boost that buffer size finally here we have transparent shadows I don't know what this does next up we have subsurface scattering so this basically dictates how light can pass through an object so let's uh let's kind of aim up here let me get out of my render settings real quick and see if we can get the sun somewhere behind our character so you can kind of really see this when again like the sun is facing the camera more or less and you're seeing the uh, shadowed side of an object so uh let's go to our render settings again and we have basically just quality settings so let's go to our scenery here i'm going to select it i'm going to go to uh let's drop down the appearance just because and we're going to go to a material we're going to scroll down here to subsurface properties and right now it's got a zero on the radius so let's see if we can bump that up you'll see that we're getting some light here basically the light is now penetrating our uh, our grass here so if i turn that off no lights penetrating so let's turn it up and as we increase it you see that more and more of the edges are being affected by the subsurface scattering so it's really kind of penetrating where it shouldn't be at this point so uh, let's bring that down to say 10 maybe 5 here and you can change the color of the subsurface scattering so if i change this to red you'll see that it's giving us more of a red hue typically maybe you'd want to leave it on uh the, the white default color here but since we're kind of dealing with some greens here maybe I'll, I'll give it a little bit of a bias towards green 
on that and we can do the same for our character so we've got steve here so we got subsurface properties here and we can turn this up and you'll see that we're getting some light shining through steve now once again we can change the color here you have also these uh rgb settings here so we can actually adjust that right in here so we can have the color be shining through a little differently i'm not honestly sure what the difference is between using this and using just the color here um, but yeah we can change the color of that subsurface scattering now one thing you can also note go ahead and save here in case we crash uh, if i go to project settings let's go to our environment and we go to our sunlight strength i'm going to turn this up say 200 percent and you'll see that the brighter the stronger the light is then the more that effect is taking place so we may want to reduce some of these settings here so that we're not getting too much craziness happening so when i do that and i got steve down to two here you can kind of see now that there's a little bit of a uh, Hit T to go to our transform properties here. You see we're getting kind of a little bit more of a quality result there. A little bit a uh, little bit of something happening there. If I do that, bring it down to one, then we're getting a little bit of uh, what you might consider uh, an edge highlight, perhaps. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So under our subsurface scattering options, we can increase the blur quality we can adjust the highlight percentage here then we have highlight strength let's just bump that up to 100 percent and i think it maybe just makes the highlight a little stronger you might not have guessed that by the name next up is indirect lighting and this says bounces light off of bright objects lighting more of the scene so let's turn that on and you don't really see a whole lot going on here this is a pretty basic scene but essentially the idea here is here i'm guessing is that if you have Let's turn the precision up on that. Maybe we want that to be real nice. Like. And as you can see, you can change the strength of it. Let's go to 200%. And again, this probably isn't the best scene to showcase this, but you can see some subtle little effects happening there where things are kind of becoming brighter from, I guess, light deflecting off of the objects in the scene. Next up is reflections, but we don't really have anything to be reflecting in our scene here. So let's actually grab something. We're gonna grab a shape. Let's grab, eh, we'll just do a cube there. I'm gonna go into our cube settings here. I'm gonna turn the metallic up on it and maybe the roughness down a bit. And then we're gonna go back to our project properties and we're gonna turn on reflections. And you'll see there something has changed about our cube. So let's kind of turn it here. You'll see that there's uh, something happening there. We're getting a bit of uh, something you might consider to be a reflection. But you can see it doesn't look too great. So let's drop down our reflections. Let's turn the precision up and see if my animator will crash on us. So far so good. Let's change the edge mount. Not really seeing a whole lot going on there. Basically what it says is fades edges of the reflections on the edge of the render to reduce artifacts. So maybe we would want that at 100%. Dunno. Then down here we have thickness and it says that uh, object thickness threshold to detect ray tracing collision. It sounds like a lot of fancy jargon. Let's just up it a little bit and see what happens. So we're stretching our Steve. We go narrow. It uh, narrows our Steve. Seems like for us at the moment, maybe around 1.5 is gonna be the uh, the sweet spot. We also may benefit from upping our samples if we're gonna be having, you know, hoping to have high quality reflections here. Next up, we have glow. We covered that in the previous tutorial about the camera settings, but you can actually add like a secondary glow which would kind of give a little bit more of a vivid strength to your, uh, your, your, your glow in your scene. But that's not that exciting. We'll just move on. Anti-aliasing. Now, before in my animator, you could bump this up. But basically, right now, 100% is probably pretty much what you want. If you turn that up, it's actually going to make the scene kind of blurry. So typically, I would say... 100% is going to be good enough. Then we have texture filtering, and the description for this is smooth textures as objects from a distance. So I personally haven't really seen much of a benefit to changing this, but this is something you can play with if you're getting sort of certain looks of things at certain angles. Um, it doesn't really seem to have a huge impact on the overall look of the scene. Uh, but it did seem to impact our subsurface scattering back there, so that may be one thing to be concerned about if you want to at least turn on this transparent block textures filtering. Next up is light management, and this is our tone mapper, if you recall from our camera tutorial. Uh, I think this is probably just going to be like a blanket of the overall scene. I don't really know if this overrides the camera or not. I don't know if I would say that it seems to be that useful here when you can just set it in the camera. 
Maybe if you're using a multiple camera setup and you don't want to set that for each camera, if you just have them on none and you have this one changed, then uh, you know it'll apply to all of them. Don't know. Next up we have models and scenery and this is where you control whether your bins are blocky or quote unquote quote, oh, the computer's not happy, realistic. So if we bend Steve a little bit there, let me actually turn this rendering off so that we can function a little bit. His bending there is pretty blocky. So it kind of goes a little not so blocky there, but it's pretty blocky. If we turn it to realistic, then you can see that we're getting a little bit of a difference there. And basically this is just making it a little bit more of like a curved bend rather than a strict blocky bend. Now in the past you could uh, kind of adjust the iterations of this so it would be like completely smooth. I'm honestly not sure if that setting still exists and if so where it is but uh, typically I would say blocky is better anyway so we're just gonna pretend like that was never a thing. Alright so down here we have opaque leaves basically this would make it so that your leaves are not see-through there you would have the old like Minecraft alpha look to the leaves. Don't know who would want that, but you can turn that on if you wanted to. Okay, so next we have liquid waves and it's on by default. And basically what we need to do, let's go down here to environment so that we can see this. If I if I go ahead and hit play here, you'll see that the water's kind of moving a little bit, but it's kind of hard to see. So let's change some settings. We're gonna go to environment. We're gonna come down here to wind. That may not be dropped down, but we're gonna drop it down. Uh, and you got your speed, you have your strength and these other settings. For now, I'm just gonna focus mainly on strength. Let's turn this up to eight and you already see that something has happened there. So if I hit play, our water is all kinds of messed up, but you can see that we're getting this uh, nice wavy look to it. If I turn that off, let's go back to our render settings in here somewhere. So if I turn that off, you'll notice we have reload affected objects to see setting changes. Don't know why it took me forever to get that out, but it did. So if I hit play, you'll see that we still have this going on and we may not want to. So what I'm gonna do is go down here to resources. I'm gonna click on my scenery because that is the object that I am currently trying to affect. And I'm gonna hit this little reload resource button and there we have it. And now when I hit play, you will see that our water is no longer moving because we turned off liquid waves. All right, so back in our render settings, I'm gonna actually turn liquid waves back on and default water reflections. Ooh, that sounds nifty. Override water blocks with a default reflective water material. So this is off by default. Let's turn it on and you'll see that we get kind of a different look here. So let's turn on rendering. Oh, look at that. We're getting some reflections in our water. So just to compare that, let's go up to our render settings we're going to turn off default water reflection and you'll see that we're getting just kind of a basic minecraft water look let's turn it back on and bada bing bada boom you can see the reflection of our scene in the water all right so that pretty much covers all of our main settings we do have these kind of default settings here that we could set that might i guess apply to everything in our scene thereafter i do not know for sure to be quite honest but that's something maybe we'll jump into at a later time in another tutorial but for now let's say you got your scene set up you're good to go this is what you want and everything has been set, your samples are set, and you want to render out your final animation. And for this example, basically I just have the camera rotating around Steve a little bit there. Beautiful, ready for YouTube. So if I wanna render this, what do I need to do? I need to go up here to render, who would've thunk it? Click on render, and then we have render animation. So if I click on that, then we get these options here. We can select our final output frame rate or even frame size if we want to adjust this. We have our format here, MP4. I normally do a PNG sequence, and the reason for that is if my animator were to crash, let's say I have a 5,000 frame animation that I want to render. If my animator crashed at, say, 2,000 frames in, then I have to start all over if I'm using one of these video formats. It's not going to render out the whole animation, and it may even corrupt the file or something who knows all kinds of wacky things might happen that uh, you know who would be able to predict it so if you do PNG sequence you will have those individual files rendered up to the 2000 frame mark when my animator crashed and then you can reload my animator and then set your loop region 
from 2000 to the end frame and then begin rendering again from that point forward. So I would recommend that. If you're doing something short, you don't care, whatever, then MP4, MOV, WMV is typically going to be fine. Next up, you have video quality. Traditionally, for your final export, you're probably going to want it to be on best. And then you have frame rate. You can have your frame rate be 24, 30, or 60. This may be different in the community build. So you have to check with those settings in there. If you have audio in your scene, then you can export the video or the final video with audio. If you're doing a PNG sequence though, that's just still images. So you're not gonna be able to export audio with that. Include hidden objects. If you've hidden objects in your scene, then you can include them. High quality rendering. I don't know why you would ever turn this off, but you know, that's an option. Show watermark, this is your Minimator watermark. If you haven't upgraded, which is free, you can donate, which is encouraged, but it is free. If you haven't done that, then you're gonna have this setting ticked and not be able to turn it off. So upgrade your Minimator. You don't have to pay for it if you don't wanna or can't. And then you can turn that off. And then when you hit save, it's gonna bring up your dialog box. You're gonna name your project. You're gonna hit save and then my animator is gonna go into its rendering and then once it's done, you will have a file in this directory of your finished product. Or if you did a PNG sequence, it'll be files of your finished product. Alrighty, boys and girls, that is going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope this series has been helpful in getting you started on making your animations and getting them actually done and exported to YouTube so that you can get all the glorious criticism and hate that we all deserve. Stick around for future tutorials. I may be coming back and doing some more on lighting and things like that. Feel free to request any tutorials you may want to see. But until then, it is time for me to end this full enthusiasm and call it a day on this video. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.